we promised that we'd take you back to the moon and now it's the right time to do that. Here's Tyler at Xenopower to explain why his company is taking a literal moonshot. You know, as a part of the Artemis program, NASA and a lot of our international partners are going back to the moon and not just to visit the moon, but to stay there this time. And this is also, uh, you know, huge commercial activity in this area. Again, kind of following the same trend of commercial industry, uh, working in the space and nuclear industry and taking the charge in a lot of those fronts. But when you're on the moon, you're generally in lightness for 14 days in darkness for 14 days, based off of the way that the moon orbits the earth and the earth orbits the sun. So if you're only using solar power and batteries, it can be very challenging, if not impossible, to operate in those 14 day lunar night. For example, the US is going to land two landers on the moon later this year, built by commercial companies that are likely going to operate for 14 days and then freeze to death. With a radioisotope power system or other sources of nuclear, you can have heat and power that enables these assets to operate for years instead of 14 days. Really critical as we look to have this sustainable presence on the lunar surface. As we look at future settlements as well, nuclear reactors, of course, are a great source of power given a lot of the dark and shadowed regions on the lunar surface. So that's kind of that focus on power and specifically on the lunar surface. And I'll add that there's only one asset on the surface of the moon right now that is operating 24-7, 365. And that is a Chinese rover that is powered by a radioisotope power system using plutonium from Russia. Uh, so a lot of what we're doing and contracts we just want from NASA and our engagement with other commercial companies is to build American-made assets that can have that same presence on the lunar surface. Aside from being spectacularly cool, powering the moon has economic benefits. As we touched on in episode two, there's a long tradition of the government being the first buyer for promising new technologies that aren't yet commercial market competitive in terms of cost. When it goes right, the government gets valuable new capabilities and private companies get to begin their journey down the experience curve to competitive prices. Tyler explained how he sees that dynamic playing out in the, and I can't believe I get to live in a time when this is a thing, in the space nuclear market. Yeah, I'll start with cost and economics because it's a, a big distinction compared to terrestrial markets. And when you look at nuclear terrestrially, at the end of the day, what matters more than anything else is the dollar per kilowatt hour. Um, you know, these are primarily competitive energy markets. And you are starting to see this change a little bit. You look at X Energy, for example, who is now looking to use the heat for, uh, you know, in the chemical industry. Um, and you're starting to see where there's use of industrial heat. But, you know, generally, you, you want to get your energy cost as low as possible, or else you could get outcompeted by the energy sources. In, in space, it's a very different paradigm. And it's not about the cost of the energy produced from nuclear. It is about the capability that is enabled. And it's enabling brand new capabilities from taking a lander that right now can operate for 14 days and enabling it to survive for five years and operate on the lunar surface. This is taking satellites that are in static orbits right now and increasing the maneuverability of them so they can have more dynamic operations as space becomes a contested environment. This is about cutting the transit time to Mars so we can reduce the radiation that astronauts are receiving to, again, increase the likelihood that they can safely visit and return from Mars. So, again, it's not about the cost. It's about the capability that is enabled. If you thought energy was a hard problem on Earth, it's even harder in space. When you're on the moon, you're in light for 14 days and darkness for 14 days. If you rely on solar and batteries, you're dead half the time. Tyler told us that two lunar landers the U.S. plans to send up later this year are going to operate for 14 days and then freeze to death. And you just can't bring up more diesel. Getting satellites to low Earth orbit is cheaper than it used to be, thanks to SpaceX, but sending a payload to the moon is still much more expensive. 